The main question for you to ask right now about that gospel I just read is, why do you think the apostles asked Jesus to teach them how to pray? Didn't they have prayers and rituals that had been part of their lives since childhood? They know, knew those prayers, but they wanted more direction, more direction. And, you know, when I think about it, it's the same thing here in First Church, especially if so many, as so many of our members now were brought up in different faiths, you know, where there, there were prayers to memorize and recite. But here in the First Congregational Church, that's not the case. There are no Hail Marys to be learned by heart. We don't recite the Apostles' Creed. The nearest thing for us is the, that's the real deal, is the Lord's Prayer. I, I tend to think the same thing was happening to the apostles that happened to us, happens to us today sometimes. Deep in our hearts, we feel a little guilty when our prayers turn always to asking God for things or for situations to get better. It seems like we're always asking. I think you start to feel guilty and reluctant. We feel like we're God's children in a constant state of gimme, gimme, gimme. Is it really okay to keep asking for God's favors or for us or even others? But the other thing we face, just like the apostles, is a bit of doubt. Sometimes I am asked, I keep being told that God loves me. Is that really true? Does God really see me, listen to me, and answer my prayers? There are times I'm not sure God is tuned into me. Who am I, this little speck of carbon in the vast universe, to matter to God? And to these questions, I can answer, yes, God listens to you. Yes, your happiness matters to God, like a kind parent. God even listens to you at times that are challenging, like that neighbor in the middle of the night who comes for three loaves of bread. But he still loves you, and he answers because God loves you. And sometimes the answer that you receive is no. Or sometimes God's yes is going to come in God's own time, a bit down the pike from when you thought you were going to get the answer. The biggest problem I think we humans ha have occurs when we really don't believe that goodness belongs to us. And it does. We so often ignore the signs that God sends us, that God hears us. Let's be clear, God, God's not going to show up as some bearded guy in a white nightgown in the middle of your living room. He's going to probably come in the form of another person, a human being, someone who cares about you or who will tend to you medically or spiritually. Yeah? This is the way that God will extend to you an opportunity, an opportunity that will only become real if you say yes. I have more than one of these personal stories, but we'll just stick to this one today since it's so warm. And uh, when I return from vacation, we'll pick up on some of the others. The, in 1984, Gary and I lived for 14 years in an attic apartment down in uh, of a two-story house down in Silver Lake, uh, New York, just uh, above east of uh, above White Plains. The landlord is, and their family was lovely. They're hardworking people, and the kids kind of grew up along with us. When we first time, uh, first moved in, you'd hear them downstairs saying. Anthony, Anthony hit me, Mom, Mom, Anthony hit me, and there would be tussles and things, and one morning we woke up several years later and we heard rock music. 
and we knew it was changing. <laughs> so <laughs> so one, one day, our landlord came and told us that his oldest daughter, Debbie, was going to be married and that we would have to move out so she could move on the second floor. Now, we were de devastated. We'd been there for 14 years. And we had no idea where we were going to go, and we had no money to put the down payment on anything. So by the holidays, things were a little bleak, to say the least. Now, every year for more than a decade at that time, we used to go save our money up, and on New Year's Eve, we spent New Year's Eve overnight on a big trip to New Canaan, to Silver Mine Tavern. This was the big deal, and it was a long trip. And so we get the same room every night, every uh, New Year's Eve, had the dinner. Then every New Year's Day morning, I had the same ritual. Before I had a chance to read anything, I would open, find the Bible in, in the, uh, the drawer, thank God for the Gideons, they put it in there, open the Bible, run my fingers randomly down the, the text, and pick a piece of scripture. And on that morning of New Year's Day, 1985, I opened my Bible and my finger landed on this text. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you shall find. Knock and it will be, oh, the door will be open for you for everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. That verse stuck in my mind. Now, that particular morning was extremely warm for a, a January. It was in the 50 de 50s, it was cloudy, it was densely, densely foggy. It was so thick you couldn't see where you were going. When we left the inn, we got turned around. And we went the wrong way. We thought it was the wrong way. It was probably the right way. About five miles up the road, we turned into a driveway of this very new condominium uh, complex and got directions from a store there. But in the next couple of weeks, we were back in the general area. A lot of the people that I worked uh, with at uh, Lawrence Hospital lived up there. So we went and got a realtor to see how much it would cost. The realtor took us around. Everything was too expensive. In the meantime, a good friend of ours began to insist to me that he would help us out with a down payment. I kept saying no. No, because I was embarrassed we couldn't do it ourselves. Then on the final trip around with the realtor, because we looked at everything, we couldn't afford it, he pulled into a driveway, and we looked up and saw the very condominium that we had pulled into the driveway on New Year's Eve. And the realtor said, oh yes, there's one nice new condo that just became available. Somebody put an offer on it, and their deal fell through. You want to see it? We went through the place. And it's the same place we have lived, on, lived in for 37 years now. I finally said yes to my friend's offer for the help with the down payment to ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Now, the point of my story is that there are always possibilities if you keep your mind open to them and realize that hope might be delivered to you in unexpected ways. Blessings to you all, and stay cool. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom.
kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory My blessing for you right now is A, for us to get through this heat wave, and B, when you do start to recover your sense of balance, do things for yourself during these next weeks to help you see beauty. Because one of the things I see happening to so many people is a kind of depression that's due to the fact we've, we've been handed so much that's negative that we, we now are not, not able to see out of the hole that we've crawled into. So bring yourselves up, do something. Go sit and look at a sunflower for 15 minutes. The pattern, the smell, the bees that come to visit and realize that things in the human world may not be going very well, but in God's world, they're going just fine, thank you. May God bless you and keep you all this week. May God make God's face shine upon you and give you peace and cool coolness. Amen. There is no